What if one man's faith could defy death itself? Elisha's story isn't just about a prophet. It's about transformation on a divine scale. Imagine a humble farmer living an ordinary life, suddenly swept into a journey of miracles and deep faith. Elisha became one of Israel's greatest prophets, not because he sought it, but because he was chosen and obedient to that calling. His life reminds us that anyone, even the most unassuming, can be transformed into an extraordinary vessel of divine power. It's a reminder that true authority comes from above, and when embraced, it can lead to remarkable change in our lives, too. What makes Elisha's story even more fascinating is how his journey demonstrates the importance of faith. It wasn't enough for Elisha to witness miracles. He had to live them. Faith wasn't just a word or a concept to him. It was an active force, driving him to perform the impossible. For us today, we might not be parting rivers or healing the sick, but think about how faith can transform our day-to-day -day lives. Maybe it's about having the courage to start that new project or trusting that things will work out even when the odds seem stacked against you. Elisha shows us what faith in action truly looks like. From the moment Elisha was called, it became clear that his journey would leave a lasting legacy. His transformation wasn't just for him. It was for generations to come. The miracles he performed and the lives he touched weren't just isolated events. They had ripple effects, much like how the choices we make today can impact those around us and even those we'll never meet. It's this broader perspective that helps us see beyond ourselves. Elisha's story encourages us to reflect on our own lives and consider what kind of legacy we want to leave behind. Elisha was going about his life as a farmer when everything changed in an instant. Picture this, a man in the field, plowing behind oxen, thinking his day would be like any other. Then suddenly, the prophet Elijah passes by and throws his cloak over Elisha's shoulders. Now, to the average person, this might seem like a random gesture, but Elisha knew better. That cloak symbolized something far greater. It was a divine calling, a signal that his life was about to take a dramatic turn. From that moment on, Elisha understood that his old life was over, and a new path of faith and transformation awaited. This wasn't a small decision for Elisha. Leaving behind his plow wasn't just a physical act. It was symbolic of leaving behind his old identity and embracing a new one. It's a lot like when people today decide to step into a new career, a new passion, or even a deeper spiritual journey. It requires trust, a willingness to step into the unknown. Elisha didn't hesitate. He slaughtered his oxen, burned his equipment, and fed the people. Talk about commitment. It's a powerful reminder that sometimes, to move forward, we have to let go of the old, even if it's comfortable or familiar. Elijah's act of placing the cloak over Elisha was more than just a sign of succession. It was a transfer of authority, a divine mantle that came with both responsibility and power. This act made it clear that Elisha wasn't just called to follow Elijah. He was called to continue the prophetic mission. It's a bit like being mentored by someone great and knowing that one day you'll step into their shoes. That kind of calling comes with immense responsibility, but also the assurance that if you've been chosen, you'll be equipped. In your own life, when you sense a calling, don't shy away. Trust that you're being prepared for something bigger. From that moment, Elisha became Elijah's devoted servant absorbing everything he could from the prophet. He wasn't just tagging along. He was learning, growing, and preparing for the day he would step into his own. The moment Elijah's time on earth came to an end, Elisha knew a significant transition was about to take place. Imagine walking alongside someone so powerful, witnessing miracle after miracle, and suddenly knowing that their journey is over, and it's now your turn. That's exactly where Elisha found himself. Elijah was taken up in a fiery chariot, a sight so awe-inspiring that it alone could have left Elisha in disbelief. Yet, in that moment, Elisha was offered a final gift, 
the chance to ask for anything. What did he request? Not wealth, not fame, but a double portion of Elijah's spirit, showing the depth of his desire for divine authority and to continue the prophet's legacy. Elisha's request was bold, but it wasn't born out of pride. It came from a deep sense of responsibility. He knew the weight of the mantle that had been passed to him, and he wasn't asking for an easier path. He was asking for the strength to carry it. Many of us face moments like this in our own lives. Moments when we're asked to step up, and the weight of responsibility feels heavy. In those times, instead of shrinking back, what if we, like Elisha, asked for the strength to handle double what's expected of us? It's a powerful mindset shift that can transform how we approach challenges. As Elijah ascended, his cloak, his symbol of authority and divine power, fell to the ground. Elisha picked it up, knowing full well that this was the moment he had been preparing for. He wasn't just inheriting a piece of clothing, he was stepping into the role of a prophet, charged with guiding a nation and performing miracles that would shape history. That cloak represented transformation. In our own lives, there are times when we're handed a cloak, a new role, a responsibility, or a chance to lead. It's in these moments that we must decide to pick it up and step into the authority given to us. Elisha's first miracle was nothing short of a bold declaration of the authority he now carried. Freshly equipped with Elijah's cloak and spirit, Elisha approached the Jordan River with a mixture of anticipation and determination. After all, this wasn't just about crossing water, it was about testing the divine power he had been entrusted with a while. He struck the river with Elijah's cloak, and, to his amazement, the waters parted just as they had for his mentor. In that moment, Elisha didn't just prove his power to himself, he demonstrated to others that the mantle had truly been passed, and he was now the prophet of Israel. This miracle speaks volumes about the courage needed when stepping into a new role or responsibility. Elisha could have hesitated, doubted himself, or questioned whether he truly possessed the divine power. Instead, he acted in faith. There's a lesson here for all of us. When faced with a challenge, don't let fear or doubt keep you from taking that first step. Like Elisha, trust that you've been prepared for the moment, even if the task feels daunting. Think about moments in your life when you've been called to act boldly, whether in your career, family, or personal growth. The first step might be the hardest, but it's also the most critical. What's especially profound about this miracle is how it mirrors Elijah's own actions. Elisha wasn't trying to outdo his predecessor. He was following in his footsteps while also carving his own path. Sometimes in life, we find ourselves walking a road that others have traveled before us. But even though we may take similar steps, we bring our own unique touch to everything we do. Just like Elisha, when we embrace both the past and our personal transformation, we create something that stands out. It's about honoring the legacy while making it your own. From this first miracle, it was clear that Elisha's journey was just beginning. When Elisha arrived in Jericho, the people were desperate. Their land, once full of promise, was now barren, and the waters were poisoned. It was a crisis that threatened their livelihood, their survival, and their future. Elisha, fully aware of his divine authority, knew that this wasn't just a physical problem. It symbolized something deeper. The barrenness of the land mirrored a spiritual drought, a need for restoration both in the natural and the spiritual realms. Elisha, with calm confidence, approached the situation not with fear, but with faith, knowing that he had been entrusted with the power to heal and transform. Elisha's solution was simple yet profound. He requested a bowl of salt and threw it into the water, declaring that the Lord had healed it. Now, on the surface, this might seem like an unusual remedy, but in this act, Elisha was symbolizing the cleansing and purifying power of God. Just as salt preserves and purifies, the divine intervention was restoring life to the land. Today, we can see a parallel 
in how small acts of faith can lead to massive transformations. It might be as simple as a kind word, a prayer, or a step of faith, but those small acts can bring healing in ways we never expected. The healing of Jericho's waters wasn't just about the physical land becoming fruitful again. It was about restoring hope. Elisha showed the people that with faith and divine intervention, even what seems permanently broken can be made whole. It's a lesson that resonates with us today, especially in times of personal drought, whether in relationships, career, or health. There's always a way for things to be renewed. Think about areas in your life that feel barren or in need of restoration. Just as Elisha turned to God for guidance, we too can look to a higher power for healing in those places. From that day on, the water remained pure, a lasting reminder of, of Elisha's authority and God's faithfulness. This miracle wasn't just a quick fix. It had lasting effects, much like the spiritual transformations we experience in our own lives. As Elisha traveled toward Bethel, an unexpected encounter revealed a side of divine authority that many find surprising. A group of youths began mocking him, specifically ridiculing his appearance. Now we might be tempted to brush off this taunting as harmless teasing, but in ancient times, showing such disrespect to a prophet, God's chosen messenger, was a serious offense. Elisha wasn't merely being insulted. His authority and the divine mantle he carried were being challenged. In response, Elisha cursed them, and immediately, two bears emerged from the woods, attacking the youths. This incident carries a weighty message about the respect owed to those who carry divine authority. This story might seem harsh at first glance, but it illustrates a broader truth about the seriousness of reverence and respect. In today's world, we often take authority lightly, especially spiritual authority. But Alicia's reaction teaches us that there are consequences when we fail to honor what is sacred. It's a reminder that while mercy and grace abound, there are moments when divine authority demands accountability. The lesson here is about the power of respect, not just for people in authority, but for the sacredness of the roles they play. It's like how we're taught to respect our elders, teachers, or even mentors in life. Respect opens the door to wisdom. Mockery leads to downfall. The bear's attack wasn't just an act of vengeance. It was symbolic of the divine protection surrounding Elisha. The message was clear. Those who mock or undermine God's anointed are placing themselves in spiritual danger. It's easy to relate this story to modern life, where people often face criticism, mockery, or even bullying. Elisha's story shows us that we don't need to defend ourselves with words or retaliate with actions. Instead, Trusting in the divine authority given to us allows for justice to unfold in ways we might not expect. In our own lives, it's crucial to stand firm in our values, knowing that we are protected. This event in Elisha's life doesn't just highlight the seriousness of his prophetic role. It also opens the door for deeper discussions about the importance of respect, integrity, and how we carry ourselves. The story of Elisha's encounter with the kings of Israel, Judah, and Edom is a riveting episode of divine intervention and miraculous provision. Faced with a dire situation during a campaign against Moab, these kings found themselves in a serious bind, dehydrated and desperate in the arid wilderness. They turned to Elisha, seeking his prophetic insight and guidance. Here was a moment that could have spiraled into despair, but Elisha's response was nothing short of remarkable. Instead of focusing on the dire circumstances, he looked to the divine for a solution, exemplifying how faith can turn bleak situations into miraculous victories. Elisha declared that water would miraculously fill the dry valley, much to the surprise of the kings. Can you imagine their disbelief? They were surrounded by arid land, yet here was Elisha, confidently prophesying an abundance of water. This act of faith highlights a powerful principle. Divine solutions often come when we least expect them. 
especially in the face of overwhelming odds. When life throws challenges our way, we can often feel like we're in a dry valley. But just like Elisha, we have the option to call upon a higher power for guidance. It's a good practice to cultivate, a habit of looking for the miraculous, even when everything around us seems desolate. The next morning, the kings awoke to a stunning sight. The valley was filled with water, just as Elisha had foretold. This wasn't just a trick of the light or a coincidence. It was a miraculous act of God that demonstrated his faithfulness to those who trust him. Not only did this unexpected provision quench the army's thirst, but it also set the stage for their victory against Moab. The lesson here is clear. When we trust in divine authority, we open ourselves up to possibilities beyond our comprehension. Think of times in your own life when you've been at a standstill, and how reaching out for help, be it through prayer, asking a friend for support, or seeking mentorship, can lead to unexpected breakthroughs. This victory over Moab didn't just quench physical thirst. It served as a reminder of God's unfailing provision and the importance of faith in times of trouble. Elisha's unwavering belief that the situation could turn around served as a catalyst for the miraculous. In a remarkable display of compassion and divine power, Elisha encountered a widow in dire straits, and her story is one of profound hope and transformation. This widow was on the brink of losing her two sons, who were about to be taken away as slaves due to her overwhelming debts. Imagine her despair, a mother facing the heartbreaking reality of losing her children due to circumstances beyond her control. In that moment of desperation, she turned to Alicia for help, embodying the power of faith and trust in divine intervention when all seems lost. Elisha's response to her plea was not merely to provide financial aid, but to guide her toward a miracle. He instructed her to gather empty vessels from her neighbors, something that may have seemed odd at first. Why empty vessels? This request speaks volumes about faith. Sometimes we must prepare ourselves for the blessings that we hope to receive, even when they seem impossible. It's a bit like planting seeds in your garden. You can't expect a harvest without first planting. The widow's act of gathering those vessels was an act of faith, a step toward the miracle she desperately needed. With the vessels collected, Elisha instructed her to pour oil from her small jar into them. As she began pouring, a miraculous thing happened. The oil continued to flow, filling every vessel she had gathered. What began as a meager supply turned into an abundance, allowing her not only to pay off her debts, but also to secure a future for her sons. This miracle serves as a potent reminder that God's provision often comes in ways we cannot foresee. It emphasizes the power of faith and the importance of taking action, no matter how small or insignificant those actions may seem. When faced with financial struggles or obstacles, think about how you might also prepare yourself to receive blessings. Whether that's budgeting wisely, seeking new opportunities, or even learning a new skill, the widow's experience encapsulates the essence of Elisha's ministry, his ability to transform hopeless situations through divine intervention. By simply following the prophet's instructions, she was able to turn her life around completely. The story of the Shunammite woman and her son is a poignant example of faith, love, and divine power showcasing Elisha's role as not just a prophet, but also a conduit of miraculous transformation. This woman, recognizing Elisha's prophetic authority, had gone out of her way to provide him with hospitality. In gratitude for her kindness, Elisha promised her a son, even though she had previously despaired of having one due to her age. When that promise came to fruition, joy filled her life until the unimaginable happened and her son fell ill and died. The heartbreak of losing her child must have been overwhelming, yet her faith never wavered. She sought out Elisha, believing that he could restore life to her boy. When she approached Elisha, her emotions were palpable, filled with grief and determination. Elisha, understanding the weight of the situation, sent his servant Gehazi ahead 
to lay his staff on the boy's face. However, this attempt did not bring the boy back to life, reflecting a profound truth about the limits of human efforts and the necessity of divine intervention. Sometimes, when faced with immense loss, we may seek quick solutions or easy fixes. But as this story teaches us, there are moments that require us to persist, to hold on to our faith, even when circumstances seem hopeless. Like the Shunammite woman, we must approach our struggles with a steadfast heart, ready to trust in a higher power. Eventually, Elisha himself went to the boy. He entered the room, laid himself on the child, and prayed earnestly. The miracle of resurrection unfolded as the boy's body grew warm, and he came back to life. This moment is not just about the miraculous act of raising someone from the dead. It's a profound testament to God's authority over life and death. For us, this story serves as a reminder that even in our darkest moments, when life seems to have slipped away, hope can be restored. It's important to remember that our circumstances do not define our reality. The divine does. Elisha's compassion and unwavering faith brought about a powerful transformation in the Shunammite woman's life. This miracle not only showcased Elisha's authority as a prophet, but also reinforced the idea that true faith can lead to remarkable outcomes. The story of Naaman, a commander in the Syrian army, is one of profound transformation and illustrates the importance of humility and faith in the face of adversity. Naaman was a valiant warrior, celebrated for his military prowess, but he bore a heavy burden, leprosy. This disease not only affected his health, but also ostracized him from society, marking him as unclean. Despite his high status, Naaman found himself desperate for a cure. It's a striking reminder that no matter how successful we may appear on the outside, we all face personal battles that can leave us feeling isolated and in need of help. Upon learning from a captive Israelite girl that Elisha could heal him, Naaman set out on a journey filled with hope. He arrived at Elisha's door with great expectations, prepared to receive a miraculous cure worthy of his rank. But Elisha's response was surprising. He didn't even meet Naaman in person. Instead, he sent a messenger to instruct him to wash seven times in the Jordan River. Imagine Naaman's disappointment. This was not the grand gesture he expected. Often, we too seek solutions that match our desires rather than the simple, humble paths laid before us. It teaches us a valuable lesson about the importance of obedience and trust, even when the solution seems too simple or beneath us. Initially, Naman resisted the instructions, filled with pride and frustration. He expected a dramatic display of healing, not a simple dip in a river. It took the persuasion of his servants, who pointed out the logic in following Elisha's seemingly humble command. How often do we find ourselves in similar situations, wrestling with pride and missing out on what could be transformative? Naaman's eventual willingness to act on faith, despite his initial resistance, led to his complete healing. When he submerged himself in the Jordan seven times, he emerged with skin as fresh as a child's, a powerful symbol of the cleansing that comes with faith and obedience. This miraculous healing didn't just transform Naaman's body, it transformed his heart as well. Overwhelmed by gratitude, Naaman returned to Elisha to profess his newfound faith in the God of Israel. His experience underscores an essential truth. Sometimes, Healing and transformation require us to step outside our comfort zones and embrace humility. In the midst of a harrowing famine during the siege of Samaria, Elisha's role as a prophet took on even greater significance. The people of Samaria were facing extreme hunger, with food becoming scarce and desperation setting in. This situation was dire, and fear gripped the hearts of many. Yet, amidst the chaos, Elisha stood as a beacon of hope. When the kings of Israel and Judah sought his counsel, he delivered a prophecy that must have seemed absurd at the time. By the next day, food would be abundant in the city. 
This declaration was not merely a statement of optimism. It was a profound assertion of faith in God's provision when everything seemed lost. Imagine the scene. People were starving, and here was Elisha, boldly proclaiming that abundance was just around the corner. His confidence might have sounded like foolishness to those surrounding him, yet it showcased the essence of prophetic authority. Sometimes faith requires us to look beyond our immediate circumstances and trust in a higher reality. For us, this raises an important question. How often do we let our current challenges cloud our vision for the future? Elisha's unwavering faith invites us to consider the possibility that a brighter tomorrow is achievable. Even when today feels overwhelmingly bleak, the next day, Elisha's prophecy came to fruition in a most unexpected way. The Syrian army, hearing a sound they thought was the approaching chariots of an enemy, fled in fear, abandoning their camp and leaving behind all their provisions. The citizens of Samaria, once gripped by despair, found themselves suddenly faced with an abundance of food, a miraculous turn of events that transformed their suffering into feasting. This moment highlights a profound truth. Divine intervention often operates in ways we cannot foresee. Just as the famine appeared insurmountable, so too can our struggles seem unyielding. Yet, when we place our trust in divine guidance, we may find that solutions arise from the most unlikely circumstances. This event not only alleviated the immediate crisis, but also reinforced Elisha's credibility as a prophet and messenger of God. Elisha's life was marked by extraordinary miracles and unwavering faith, but even his death could not diminish the impact he had on Israel. When Elisha passed away, his legacy as one of the most powerful prophets was firmly established. However, the story doesn't end with his passing. It takes a remarkable turn. Shortly after his death, a group of men was burying a deceased companion when they unexpectedly saw a band of Moabite raiders approaching. In their haste, they hastily threw the body into Elisha's tomb, seeking refuge from danger. What happened next was nothing short of miraculous. Upon contact with Elisha's bones, the dead man came back to life. This astonishing event highlighted the enduring power of Elisha's prophetic spirit and the divine authority that remained even after his physical presence had departed. This miracle serves as a profound testament to the idea that true legacy transcends death. Elisha's life and actions had such an impact that even his remains were a conduit for divine power. It challenges us to think about the kind of legacy we leave behind. Are we investing in relationships, faith, and acts of kindness that will carry on after we're gone? Elisha's life encourages us to live in a way that inspires and uplifts others, knowing that our actions can resonate long after we are no longer here. The resurrection of the man in Elisha's tomb also speaks to the broader theme of hope and restoration. It's a powerful reminder that even in our darkest moments, there is potential for renewal and transformation. Just as the dead man was revived, we can experience our own forms of resurrection in life, be it through healing, new beginnings, or unexpected opportunities. In times when we feel defeated or burdened by our past, it's crucial to remember that transformation is always possible. The essence of life continues, and with faith, we can rise from our own tombs of despair. Elisha's posthumous miracle signifies that the impact of a faithful life is immeasurable. Don't let dreams remain dormant. Resurrect them with faith and action. If you want to continue exploring these incredible stories of transformation and divine miracles, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Join us on this journey of discovery and let's unlock the extraordinary potential within ourselves together.